Hi, everybody. Hello. How are you? I'm so, so, so excited to be back with another episode of Feed Your Soul. Now, I'm saying another episode because we started this last year, at the beginning, this time last year, of when the whole world turned upside down. And we tried to keep it going, but it was challenging. You guys loved it. We had tons and tons and tons of views and amazing guests, but it was challenging to keep it going. So we went a little on hiatus, and now we are back with a new premiere and a new season. And we've got literally months and months and months of the most innovative, exciting chefs on the planet who are coming here to cook with us every Wednesday. So I just want to know what it's like, what you're feeling, how you're doing. Tell me how things are going. We haven't checked in like this in a while. And uh, I'm excited to be back and to be cooking and talking with you about things that we are passionate about, right? So food and soul, they're so interconnected, and we're going to get right into it today. So I want to tell you about today's guest, but make sure, please, you just check in, let me know where you're watching from, say hey, and uh, how you're feeling. Very, very, very important. And what you're eating. I want to know what you're eating. I want to know what you're drinking. I just want to know everything. So just talk to me. Okay? Talk to me. So for today's special guest, hi, Jay, how are you? Ready for this? Chef Diane Forley's roots began at a young age while cooking with her mother and learning classic Spartac foods. She enjoyed the kitchen so much that she sought out to learn professionally and cooked in Paris and New York City restaurants, including the River Cafe and Gotham Bar and Grill. Her restaurant, Verbena, New York City, was renowned for market menus, putting fruits and vegetables at the center of the table. In 2009, Chef Forley opened Flourish Baking Company with a mission to transform her kitchen towards a more sustainable approach to baking using only plant-based ingredients free from eggs, cream, milk, and butter. You see, I get excited about these things. We're actually making vegan shakshuka today. Oh my gosh, I just let the cat out of the bag. Um, you can find Chef Forley all on line. We'll be scrolling her her uh, URLs. So you can find her easily. FlourishBakingCompany.com, MeringueShop.com. She's on Facebook. She is on Instagram. And of course, she is here with us today. Chef Forley, welcome to the show. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. That was a great intro introduction. It's a pleasure to have you. We're getting again that little staticky feedback. I feel so bad about the AirPods. Maybe oh, we should talk okay. about them. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. We tried, we tested, we come on for these technical tests before, and then things happen. That's what happens in live television. How's that? Can you hear me? Oh, it's perfect. I can hear you perfectly. Can you hear me? I hear you perfectly. Amazing, amazing. So we're making vegan shakshuka today. So we'll start with cooking, we'll talk while we cook, and then we'll talk more after we cook. So just tell me the inspiration for this dish. Great. Well... I love shakshuka. Um, obviously, shakshuka is tradition. It's a traditional uh, tomato stew, and uh, it's used as a, a way to braise um, poached eggs. And it's a wonderful breakfast dish, brunch dish, or now it's become quite popular. Um, so the challenge is eggs. We're a, a plant-based vegan company. Um, so I wanted to use all the flavors of the shakshuka and transform it into one of our signature vegetable buns. So. I'll show you a quick shakshuka recipe. Um, you can enjoy it. Um, I use uh, white cannellini beans as a protein instead of- I love, I love that you added the protein. You can also use tofu if you want to add a little tofu that way. Mm -hmm. um, but the little the little add on here, because traditionally you, you um, enjoy it with a nice slice of toasted bread, uh, putting the shakshuka in the bread. So I've already jump started the shakshuka because of the time factor. As you can see, I have some another camera here on the peppers that are cooking. Wait, so, what color peppers do you have there? Peppers over here. Um, I use. You can use any peppers that you have: red, yellow. Um, you can use green if you want, but usually I like to stick with the red and the yellow. Um, okay. Some shallots are a little bit sweeter. You can add some garlic if you like. And this has been cooking in olive oil for about 15 minutes. And now I'm going to add some Swiss chard. Wait, I love, and Chef, I love that you did the peppers lengthwise. You went like with strips with them yes. as opposed to chop. Yes. So now it's going to go back on the stove. Great. Oh, the Swiss chard looks fantastic. And I like Swiss chard. Actually, my mother uses a lot of Swiss chard. Um, sh there's some, a lot of tomato stewy type of dishes that she's always cooked for me. One of them is bamya, uh -huh. which she often puts um, 
to, uh, it's traditionally made with a tomato, a little lemon juice, dried apricots for natural sweetness. And that is like a, a flavor that I grew up with. So anything that's extrude tomato um, reminds me of her cooking. And she's still cooking, <laughs> loves to cook. Wow, how old is she? This is 92. <laughs> oh, amazing. That's unbelievable. Uh, she should be oh, 220. Listening. But um, <laughs> my father is 93. Wow, and unbelievable. So amazing. And my inspiration, both of them. So, Chef, you said you grew up with Spartac cooking, Swiss shards, two tomato dishes are very, very, very Spartac. Where is your family from? So, um, my mother is from uh, originally from Guatemala, but her my grandmother's from actually Bombay, India. She immigrated to Alexandria and then they moved to, eventually to South, South America. My father's from Hungary. Wow, wow. It's got a little UN situation going, fantastic. So while this is cooking, I'm also gonna add my spices and the spices that are traditional to shakshuka, a little cumin, a little chili, um, a little, I use a little smoked paprika for a little smoky flavor. Mm. You can really spice it up or down according to your, to your desire. Excellent, I love this. What made you um, start playing around uh, with shakshuka and doing, like why Why pick this dish? You know, it's become more popular, but I'm wondering if you sort of jumped on the trend that's more popular or if you were ahead of the trend in terms of bringing it into your restaurants and your, your uh, cooking. Um, it's a good question. I, I was so excited to see shakshuka coming along on menus. It just started popping up everywhere. I think like the avocado toast yeah it's really good like you know uh toast topper you know just something that people really discovered um um i think people as they branch out to some ethnic inspiration um and i think um middle eastern cooking is definitely like in its heyday it's like really That's exciting fine. yeah you know here in israel so i have my own shakshuka pan and I also order, I make it my business to order shakshuka at every restaurant I go to because I like to know like what's the best shakshuka, you know, in a state or in a country. And so I, I always order it. And I often have it even for dinner. You were talking about it for brunch or lunch, but even for dinner, it's fantastic. It's just- I don't know what the pan is. What is that? Oh, so it's like a basically a, a, a individual, that's how they serve it in Israel. It's a pan for two where you'll be able to put two eggs or just enough of the serving for one person and enough for two eggs, like I said. And then you take it from the from the stovetop to the table and serve it just like that in a pan with usually not long handles, but short little gold handles so it fits comfortably on the table. And it's like, you know, a stovetop to table pan. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm now gonna add the tomato sauce because the, the greens, the spices are added, a little wilted, and now I'm gonna add the tomato sauce and let that cook. Excellent. And is this, um, I see a lot of chunkiness in there, like a very rustic tomato sauce, not mm -hmm. smooth at all. You can use just chopped tomatoes if you have a nice chunky tomato sauce that you like to use. It's so flexible. I think that's what's really nice about this is there's so there's a lot of freedom to make it your own. Yeah. So shakshuka actually means mixture in Arabic. And that's the idea. And I think that the freedom that you're talking about. It really is just a mixture of the things that you love. So Chuck, you could put any kind of vegetables in there. Eggplants are fantastic in here. Um, you know, uh, peppers we spoke about. I'm just trying to think. Swiss chard, spinach. Um, obviously, if this, you know, wasn't vegan, there's many other options. But I think that it really, from a vegetable perspective, what are some of the other ones that you would throw in? For greens, kale. Oh, kale. Oh, yes. Um, we use a lot of a lot of greens at Flourish. Um, I always like to to really balance my dishes with, you know, colors of the rainbow, whether it's the green vegetables, the bright peppers, yeah. um, uh, yellows, orange, you know, really just pull from all the vegetables, um, root vegetables. So we try and offer different flavored buns with different vegetable combinations. Um, I had a teacher. I, and I, and I end up using a lot of greens in almost every dish. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I had a teacher when we were young who used to tell us to eat healthy and eat the rainbow. And that's how you know you're eating healthy. And I see that, you know, the pan just looks like that's so colorful. So what's and next? You can add a little olive oil if you like, you know, to your taste, just to give it a little bit more of a richness, or you can just leave it as is. Right. Um, I'm going to, in the interest of time, I'm go going to jump to the um, the buns, how to form the buns. Great. You actually wanted to try this at home. Um, Actually, one second. 
So the last thing I'm going to do, I would normally let this cook a little longer, but just because I'm, we're going to speed this up a little, I'm going to add the beans. The beans get added at the end because they don't really need to cook. Um, right. They're cooked white beans. Right, we just need to warm them through. Uh, they also add color and texture and body to this dish. I absolutely love it. Wow. It's, it's, to me, it's almost like a mix between Middle, middle Eastern and like an Italian white bean soup or something. I, 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 not a white, yeah, it's a dish. I, lo I love that addition of the beans. I'm just gonna bring this over. Okay. Just to show you if you wanted to do this. If you had, this is like a mold that I have um, with some cavities you could use, any kind of ramekin. Um, and then basically the little trick that I have here is, well, it's always nice to use some sort of measured spoon, whether it's a, a ladle or something that helps you um, to pre-measure. So then I'm, I'm just ladle it, ladling it into these cavities and then I'm going to freeze it. Oh, I love that. And I just want to say something about the ice cream scooper that you're using. I think that's one of the most favorite kitchen uh, utensils after Chong's is my ice cream scooper. And I use it almost for everything except for ice cream. I don't even eat a lot, a lot of ice cream, but always when I'm baking and like, you know, like ladling things, as you said, into molds, buns, cups, etc. It's such a fabulous tool for that. Recently, I discovered, actually, I was doing a class on buñuelos, um, little donuts for Hanukkah. And I found yeah. that, you know, instead of wrestling with the dough, you know, with my hand, the scoop was amazing. I just sprayed it with a little nonstick spray, and that just was so easy. Well, because I'm always, like, boiling my hands and then, like, warming them and dropping them in. That's so smart. Yeah. So it's all these years to figure that out. Show you. They're, they're nicely portioned. Yes, fabulous. Hi everyone, guys, please tell us where you're watching from. Tell us your favorite shakshuka add-ins. We want to hear from you. The only thing I forgot to add to that mix was my fresh cilantro. So that oh. goes cilantro, more parsley, yes. the better the better. Hi, Rana in Fairlawn, New Jersey, how are you? Hey there in Vegas. We got people watching from Vegas, Germany, Florida, Fairlawn, New Jersey. I'm from Sweden. Okay. Yay. Hello, everybody. And from Greece, please tell us if you like shakshuka, how you like to enjoy your shakshuka, how you like your shakshuka. That's what we want to know. Hey there, Lisa. Oh, my gosh. Indiana and Pakistan. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's beautiful. I love it so we can see it in the bowl as well. Australia. Hello there. Mirala in Peru. Everyone is watching us, Chef. Everyone. <laughs> Here's a little bowl of the shakshuka if you wanted to enjoy it on its own. Oh, that's stunning. I love that. And you just added that. What did you accentuate with? Because it's a teeny bit far. Oh, just a sprig of cilantro. Oh, beautiful. Okay, fine. I can see that now. My mom is watching. Hi, mom. How are you in Philly? You said your mom is watching too, your mom and dad? Yes. Nice. In, from New York. Hi, Chef's mom and dad. Okay, so these are the buns. So talk to me about the flour in these buns. What what type of this bun? This is a potato bread that I make. You can use pizza dough, anything that's really nice and stretchy, as you can see. So All I right. have these little frozen pieces. And so now I'm just going to form right over the bun. Wow. And wow. it's so easy. And it's really nice. And so now I have a little bun. You can see that. Wow. Yes, I can see. The dough looks delicious. It just looks so light and stretchy, as you said. I love that. And so I'm just going to put it right into this little a little foil or ramekin or anything. Yeah. That and so there. We love, love, love this idea. Um, often, you know, in Israel, it's served with warm bread, warm pita, and you're putting the shakshuka in the bun. Have you ever seen this before? Was this your invention? <laughs> No, I haven't seen it. I, I have so many different flavors of buns right now that um, that are available on our on our website. Actually, they're all they're savory vegetable buns. I have um, I even have like a spaghetti squash and meatball. I have uh, pierogi. I have all sorts of flavors. Wow, it's a complete meal right there. Right. So that's it. So it's a handheld meal. It's portable. It's very easy. Um, so now these will bake. You can also these are really great to have um, on hand um, if you want a quick meal. Yeah, so why do you put your Okay, 
They stopped. They stopped. So you can see I put the filling and now they're a nice little sandwich inside. You know, and I love it. They're, the dough is so light. They're not super doughy. They're actually much more filled than they are doughy, which I think is a great ratio if you want to enjoy a nice meal. So now it's like a nice little sandwich. Yeah. And enjoy that. And uh, you can take your shakshuka on the go. <laughs> I absolutely adore this idea. Wow, it's so genius. Guys, if you like the idea, please let us know. Tell us you're enjoying it. Tell us if you've ever thought about something like this. This is like the sandwich all made in one portable. I think it's like so amazing. Sherry's saying she never tried ch shakshuka before. Now is your time. A green shakshuka with eggs. People definitely you know, love that as well. Um, oh, my mom is, my parents are from Transylvania. So my mom is, wants me to say hi to your parents in Hungary. <laughs> <laughs> so hot blood and serbus high and by them. Yes. So my father. Yes. So I know all those words. <laughs> yeah. Totally. totally. <laughs> so chef, this is the fun part where we get to sort of chit chat a little bit about you, your background, your passion for food and cooking. Did you bring anything along to drink and sit with us while we talk? I did. Um, I was excited about that prospect because I love beverages. Um, I love different kinds of teas, and so this is. One of my favorite teas, it's Pu'er. Um, it's a fermented black tea that is a, a really good coffee replacement. So if you want to break from coffee, um, it's it's a, a digestive tea, um, but there is some caffeine, of course. Um, and it, it's got a really delicious roasted quality to it. And as you can see, it looks almost like coffee. Yeah, I do. I love that. So it's so funny. I thought I was going to be boring, but I also brought tea. I brought along chamomile green tea. I drink about five cups of green tea a day, and I love varying up the flavors. And my husband just, you know, he always gets to surprise me and bring me home something different. I thought the chamomile was like, I love that, just so relaxing. I used to always have a cup of chamomile before bed, and now so the chamomile green tea. I figure we'll enjoy that together. <laughs> so cheers with our tea. L'chaim, I love it. So I, I was thinking to go back and forth between iced or warm, and I decided I wanted a little bit something warm and cozy while still like kind of winter for a second here in Israel. What's the temperature like over there in New York? What's it to the house today? Um, it's starting to get spring-like, so it's been between 60 degrees, um, but then it's kind of doesn't know yet. So this weekend it might be 30, 40 degrees again. So still a <laughs> We'll see. Oh, we'll see. Okay, so tell me just a little bit about your passion for cooking. I know you said it sparked um, while your mother was cooking Sparta classes, uh, classics. She did a lot of cooking at home. Um, but how did it develop into something? Oh, this is interesting to like, this is my life's passion. Um, ever since I can remember, I was always in the kitchen with my mother. Um, she would be cooking, and I often did a dessert for either Shabbat or. Mm -hmm. On the week during the week for fun, and I just really liked it. And this was pre-internet, uh, so um, all of my information came from reading books or magazines. Um, and so I tried to just work my way through cookbooks. And at the time, I was mainly baking, and so um, just really baking all through high school. And before I went to college, I did an internship in a restaurant in the city called the Palace Restaurant. It was a long time ago. And I really just loved it. But I went through my college and I, I even did my thesis on um, culinary history and um, uh, 19th century, the rise of the revolution, the rise of the restaurants in 19th century France. Uh, so I was still always very involved in food and food things. And, and it's to be coming into the food industry now where there's so much at your fingertips is a great time. Um, just, um, YouTube or, you know, just even what you're doing to be able to broadcast and bring people together from different parts of the world. It's just very exciting. It is very, it's such an exciting time right now. And obviously um, we've all been online before, but now with everything that's going on in the world, it's brought so many of us, I think, closer together. We're spending a lot more time here online together. And I'm cooking with people all over the world that I never even expected to. And so it's been such an inspiration for me. Um, these days and to be here with you. I, you know, cooking is a very soulful endeavor. It's a very, we spoke about passion. Um, I, uh, I named this show Feed Your Soul because I feel like if it was just about nourishment and survival, we wouldn't be putting this much into it. You know, so what do you think? Why do you think it's, um, if you agree with me, why do you think it's so much more than that, right? We're, we're not just eating to live. 
um, we're almost looking to eat. So talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on that. Well, any all of my um, businesses have always been passion driven from my restaurant at Verbena. It's, it's a small restaurant and we really, each customer, we were basically cooking for each customer. We really liked the personal contact um, and it was really important about the ingredients that we used because we were we would think about who was enjoying that at the other side and really trying to create a special experience in the restaurant. Now that I have a bakery, um, which is all plant based, it also caters um, as a bonus um, to different um, lifestyle or uh, dietary choices. And I really feel like I'm providing such a great service and opportunity with delicious foods and and cakes for people that can't really find um, plant-based baking in too many places. So I feel that really trying to educate people that you can, there's many options in, in how you cook. Um, and it's very exciting with all the new ingredients that are out there. Um, I just love to be able to experiment with different ingredients that can move towards a plant-based um, palette and and show people that look at what you can do um, with all these amazing ingredients. Yeah, I love seeing your, uh, your creativity on display, especially, you know, when we're on your website. We have a fun part of the show that we want to do 10 rapid fire questions. And the idea here with these questions is you just don't think, just you know, answer whatever comes to mind first. It can be one word or it can be you know, a, a, a few sentences, but some of them are quicker, some of them are, are deeper. Hopefully we'll get through them all, but just wanna hear your thoughts on this. So your favorite ingredient. Oh boy, um, my favorite ingredient, uh, chickpeas. <laughs> oh, I like that, I like it, I like it, I like it. Okay, favorite Jewish food. Uh, mashi. Wow. So do you want to explain what that is? Um, again, it's one of my mother's specialties. It's stuffed squash with uh, rice and meat, usually it's chicken. Um, that's not vegetarian. Um, it's, it can be made vegetarian um, with a tomato and um, uh, apricot sauce. So we have a, a very nice um, a recipe for it, and we actually show it's called Dolma in some countries, Mashi in some countries, and you could stuff not just zucchini, of course. Um, Yaprak, it's called from Iraq. Uh, you could stuff onions, you could stuff um, peppers, you could stuff tomatoes, um, but you know, zucchini is a classic, so I, I love hearing that. That's so funny, I never would have guessed, but yay. And do, uh, do you still eat meat? Like, is that something you do, or now not anymore? Would you make Mashi? 95% but vegan and 5% is for my mother's cooking, where I make exceptions. <laughs> right. I, I love it. Given suggestions for mashi, dolma, yaprak, all these sub vegetables, doing it with, you know, a quinoa, which is as like a little bit more protein based with the tomato inside. Like, what, how would you make it vegetarian yourself or vegan? You can use actually um, like a seitan. Um, I just shared a recipe with somebody, they shared it with me. Um, he happens to be Syrian and it's a seitan uh, filling. And that sounded, I really would like to try that. Um, right. Yeah. That's a nice idea, I love that. Okay, favorite dish to make? My favorite dish to make? I love making meringues. Um, I love the, you can see on Meringue Shop, which is my site dedicated to vegan meringues made from aquafaba. I just love, it's very meditative and I like to paint them different colors. So when I actually have time, I, I just set myself up at, at work and I there's nobody there and I just go to town. <laughs> just It's so funny because cooking for many people, baking especially, is very therapeutic. Um, do you find that to be the case? Oh, definitely. The repetition is very therape therapeutic. Right. Very nice. Amazing. Okay. Favorite dish? I asked you your favorite dish to make, um, your favorite dish to eat. What do you have? Uh, did I ask you your favorite dish to eat? I can't even remember if I went out of order. Mom was yes. your favorite. Your favorite Jewish food was mashi. Your favorite dish to make was meringues. What's your favorite dish to eat? My fa Oh, I love avocados. Anything with avocado. I'm so happy that they, that they become um, so in vogue now because, you know, I love to use them with a little tahini. 
Uh, first of all, I absolutely adore avocado as well. I say like avocados are God's gift to this world. Um, they're so creamy. They're so buttery. My mom was making me avocado toast like 30 years ago before it was in fashion. Um, and like you said, it's great to be on trend, but I feel like I appreciated them and loved them before, you know, they were uh, on the scene. So and it's funny, you like the avocados with Trina. That's so interesting. It's delicious. Delicious. Yeah. Fabulous. I love that idea. Okay. What did you have for breakfast today? Um, I I had a piece of, that's what I had. <laughs> I had the avocado on toast. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Improving it. And then what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> I'm sorry. And what's for dinner tonight? Uh, dinner for tonight is um, we're going to have a little Israeli couscous. Um, I have a delicious, I'm going to do a pan roast of cauliflower and broccoli uh, with the Israeli couscous. And I will probably use some of this shakshuka sauce. I was going to guess, I was going to guess it's the shakshuka buns or something to do with all the food you just made. Okay, two unexpected things in your fridge or pantry right now. Um, I have, um, let's see, what do I have? Oh, I have some pickles that have been pickling for a while, a rutabaga and carrot pickle. Beautiful. Um, and then I have, um, uh, capers. <laughs> I love capers. I love salty capers. I think you just add them to almost anything, that little bit of you know, puckering punch. I love that. Okay, so tell me your, and I just thought, my earliest food memory. My earliest food memory. Oh, wow. Um, We're going deep here. It's Feed Your Soul Chef, you know? Like, we want to, like, dig deep. Okay. Um, I remember enjoying... This my favorite dish when I was little was scrambled eggs on sand, a scrambled egg sandwich. Wherever I went, that's what I would have. So it was unfortunately not. Um, um, it's just simplicity. I feel like the simplicity, the warmth, you know, can come from really easy preparations and it smells and yeah. I love that. I, t I do agree with that. Cooking makes me feel relaxed. That's so nice. People ask me, you know, all the time um, if I find it relaxing or if I find it creative. And I feel like it's challenging for a mom with little kids at home, you know, and different ages. When I'm cooking, it could sometimes be very stressful. So it's nice to hear that we'll get to a place one day where it's like, can go back to relaxing. And I always say you have to cook happy, right? Because it, it, it infuses your food, however you're feeling. And I always try to remember when my kids are stressing me out or when things are going on behind me, like, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. It's going to make the, good, the food good. So uh, it's nice to hear, like, maybe you don't have a lot of little kids underfoot right now and you can be very relaxed while you're cooking. <laughs> my kids are high school and college now. But um, I always find that in the kitchen, that's my place. That's my place to be. So it's, I look forward to being in the kitchen and I feel like that's kind of my, my personal time. So because it's what I do as my work, it's yeah. also my hobby and my pleasure all in one. So I'm able to, it's not stressful because I find it easy um, for me to do the work. Mm -hmm. So I'm always, being in the kitchen is always, uh, has, only positive moments for me um and i'm always thinking about new dishes so it's it's not only is it that i'm preparing something for my son who's here at home now um but i'm also thinking about oh how how can i make a new dish at work um and i'm also just enjoying the moment where i can just unwind so i love that you know and just a, a last thought for us to think about you know for me um food is, and cooking is very much about my family. I think I always am thinking about them when I'm cooking and it's about the meal that we're going to have or the holiday that we're going to celebrate or for the weekend it's Shabbat, you know, and I, I look very much, I, I, I think for me the cooking is the means to the end, to those family meals and just hanging around the table like just forever and a day. And I think about that a lot when, when I cook and when um, that inspires me in the kitchen to make 
things that are beautiful or things that are nourishing or things that are flavorful or things that are interesting. What for you, you know, sort of drives your passion other than your personal passion for cooking and creativity? Just give me one sort of soulful thought about whether it's a family, whether it's sustainability. Talk, talk to me about something a little bit deeper that cooking, you know, does for you or what it does in terms of your relationship with others. Well, the fa that family sitting around at a nice table has always been a very special experience. Um, the, at our home, my, my mother, my father and my brothers and my kids, we all sit at a beautifully set table. And I, I always like to bring a dish to, to contribute um, to the spread. And also the conversation before planning the menu, as you said, holidays, you know, planning the menu, deciding the recipes or, you know, of course, on the holidays, we, we always look forward to the, those holidays when we're going to repeat the ritual of making those dishes. But we yeah. talk about it anyway. And then we, we maybe we bring in something new. So it, it is that whole moment and the conversation of the planning of a special uh, dinner uh, and sharing that um, with the family, I agree, is, is such an important part of eating together um, with the family. I absolutely love that. And I think it's such, what you said is so um, beautiful. Passover is coming. And he so, spoke about the ritual of planning sort of those same meals and going back to those traditional dishes or the dishes that you grew up with. It's such a way of, it's so cliche, but connecting us to our past, to our story, to our heritage, and also to moving forward and creating sort of new memories for our kids and through the generations and allowing that to continue. So I, I very much love that. When he spoke about the potato flour and the potato bread, I was thinking, oh my gosh, Passover, Passover. It's like on my brain, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like that dish, um, and even I'm wondering, you know, I think we definitely have the recipe for the wiping shakshuka that we posted, but the potato bread, is that something that could be easily converted to Passover? Does it have regular flour in it as well? Um, that actually is made with all-purpose flour, but um, I figured, I figured. Uh, you, what we do, we actually make a really nice gluten-free bread. Um, Great. Um, I don't think, but however, it has yeast, so maybe that's not going to work. Right. <laughs> I think there, we just have to wait till after Passover. For sure. I was looking, I'm like, that dough is too delicate, stretchy, yeah. and divine to be kosher for Passover. <laughs> that's for sure. Diane Morley, thank you so much for joining us. Everyone can see your information scrolling along the bottom. Um, I hope that we'll have a chance to cook with you again. I feel like you referenced so many fun dishes, and it might be fun to come back, you know, circle back in a few months and do something like mashi um, that is vegan. I, I like, I love that idea. So, I'm more than happy to. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining. And I want to wish you early wishes for a happy Passover. And to everyone who's watching, please, guys, it's so important for us to hear back from you what you liked, what you enjoyed. If you also want to give us suggestions for those 10 rapid fire questions, I'd love, I'd love to hear what you want to know. I, I really want to focus, you know, the first part of the program on cooking, but the second part very much sort of on the soul and spirituality and food. And it would mean a lot to me to kind of hear which points um, in that conversation are interesting to you, what we should be exploring. The program is going to be every Wednesday at basically, more or less, depending on if something crazy is going on in my life, 12 p.m. Eastern, okay? So 12 p.m. Eastern time, which makes that 7 p.m. in Israel, except for next week when we change the clock um, <laughs> for like a few weeks before, you know, they do in uh, the States, and that makes things really challenging. And that's 9 a.m. on the West Coast. So you could basically have breakfast with us have lunch with us or have dinner with us, depending on which time zone you're in or a snack. Cause we, I saw there are lots of people watching from Brazil and Argentina and Sweden. So wherever you are in the time zone, eat with us, bring a drink. That's the idea here. Everyone should bring a drink. I have my chamomile green tea. Um, you can bring a glass of wine. You can bring coffee. You can bring, um, depending on where you're at. I was thinking of doing like an iced Israeli slushy or a limonana um, soon as it starts to get a little bit warmer today, kind of like hinted at summer today. And I was like, no, not yet, not yet. So I had this warm green tea. Um, but this is when we want to hear from you. So please drop your comments everywhere. Of course, the recipe will be on H.com and JamieGeller.com. The show is done together with H, with Jamie Geller. I know I'm talking about myself in the third person, but I'm referencing my you know website. And um, you can find us everywhere. Come 
This is the time where you get to feed your soul, both figuratively and literally. So come join us on Wednesdays and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.